my little sleeve stack hanging on to the Tesla coil. Boy, he's gonna get a shot. What are you doing, sleeve stack? Welcome, MuseCon patrons, nurturing our muses, whoever you are. Wait, wasn't that entertaining our muses last year? Hmm. Oh. Something different next year. Pretty nice place, uh, this uh, venue, Northwestern, uh, Western Chicago Northwest here in Itasca. Cool place, let's hear it, good place. Yeah. So how's everyone enjoying the relatively cool weather here in Itasca? Was it too hot? We are... Uh, We've been hoping it doesn't rain all day, and we're continuing to hope. Get through the show and everything, so let's keep it clear. Yeah. No rain! Not yet. Wait till we're done. Okay, so uh, who are we? We combine uh, technology, science, and music to bring you high-tech edutainment. We have two humongous computer-controlled Tesla coils that generate 12-foot lightning bolts and play music. Pretty cool. We have a guy in a metal suit. That's me. I do really cool stuff with the hot white plasma. We are the masters of lightning. So my name is Terry Blake. I work at Motorola at, during the daytime, but at night I put on this suit and play with lightning. I wanted to call myself something uh, better than just Terry Blake at night, so I had some, some names, had some rejects. We had the Captain Corona was one, uh, Admiral Ark, another one, Lightning Man. Uh, second place was Frank Zapper. It's not too bad. But I went with Dr. Zeus, named after the guy that throws lightning bolts down at us uh, during the storms. No, I'm not a real doctor, only play doctor on the weekends, like, like here. Uh, so let me introduce some of the uh, other people supporting the show tonight. At the uh, control table over there, we have uh, Jeff Larson uh, from a Fermi Lab. And uh, next to him, we have uh, Mike Wren. And uh, going to the other side, we have Todd Johnson. And a little further down, I see we have a Mary Lynn Johnson, and uh, we have a Brian Peterson, uh, let's see, and a Doug Wewell, and a Paul Guidarini. Big, big, big cast of people to help us all out here. So yeah, thanks for the big hand. So uh, lastly, you know, we do have a lot of experience with this. Do not attempt it at home, uh, but uh, you, know, you can try it here, actually, because uh, we've got this audience participation part of the show where uh, we've constructed this one-size-fits-all suit uh, that kind of looks like a, like, a, like a cage over there. So uh, we call it uh, the uh, cage of death, but uh, for insurance purposes, it's known as the super happy fun box. It keeps the, it keeps the rates down. Uh, so anyway, uh, so uh, you get in there, and then we'll, uh, well, we'll do a normal show for about a half hour, and we'll put the cage right here in between the Tesla coils, and, and you can come, come in here, and you could get pounded by 24,000 watts of electricity for 60 seconds, and uh, so it's like five bucks for adults, two bucks for kids, and we give you a cool ribbon that says, I survived the cage of death, so you can stick that on your ribbon stack there. Uh, so anyway, how about we do a little bit more uh, cool musical sparks, some Beverly Hills Cop. How about that?
Okay, so you may have noticed I'm wearing a suit made of uh, some kind of metal. It's, it's tiny metal rings. Uh, the, the metal conducts uh, electricity better than my body, so electricity would rather go through this metal suit than through me. Uh, this works great as long as it all stays together. There's a bunch of parts. There's like, there's like pants and uh, a shirt connected together with a belt, and there's individual gloves and a separate helmet. And uh, basically, uh, as long as they all stay together, then everything will be great. Um, I also have rubber boots supported by insulators so you can see the sparks leaving my body as they head to ground so you know that the electricity is really going through me. Uh, this suit has been put to test many times and is now fully certified for these activities. feel very safe inside, uh, safer than people who are not wearing a suit. Uh, you guys are probably okay. You're good. So we always do some low power testing of the suit just before we crank it up. The suit's parts are not all connected together. Electricity flows through me instead of the suit. Uh, this will cause me significant discomfort and some unplanned entertainment. So you might be getting some extra entertainment tonight. So how about we test out the suit and see if it works. The Masters of Lightning have developed a new technology that surpasses the latest computer technology of CD burning. <laughs> Our new system can burn 20 discs at a time at a speed of 1000x per disc. On this frame you'll see 20 CDs lined up edge to edge. 
The lightning bolt of the Tesla coils is a high temperature plasma that would prefer to travel through metal rather than air. There's a thin layer of aluminum on the CDs. The bolt of lightning reaches out from the Tesla coil, hits the CD, travels through the metal, comes out the other side, and jumps through the air to hit the next CD. The plasma is white hot, which is thousands of degrees C. This very high temperature plasma vaporizes the thin metal on the CDs, blasting off the reflective layer. Want to see? We have a set of clear light bulbs with wire filaments. The main components are a glass enclosure, the bulb part, and a filament of tungsten wire inside the bulb. To extend the life of the filament, the bulb is filled with an inert gas called argon. Pirates actually pronounced it argon. Say it with me like a pirate. Argon. All right. We're going to demonstrate a few things with these incandescent light bulbs. We'll pass the high voltage from the Tesla coils through the filaments and light them up. These are 40 watt bulbs and will require about a third of an amp to fully illuminate them. We'll also illuminate the gas inside the bulb by passing high voltage from the outside glass to the filament inside. That will result in purple electrical plasma inside the bulbs. How about we give this a try? These Tesla coils are electronically controlled by a computer. We can control when a spark is generated to within a millionth of a second of accuracy. We can generate sparks that are in phase with each other, which results in sparks that repel. We can also generate sparks that are 180 degrees out of phase with each other, resulting in sparks that attract. When they attract, they can create one continuous lightning bolt between the coils up to 20 feet long. Totally awesome, dudes and dudettes. Let's check it out with this totally awesome song called Doctor Who.
A neon sign is made of glass tubes that have been filled with a gas and bent into letters or decorative designs. Various gases can be used, including argon. Very good. There are metal electrodes inside on both ends of the tubes. When a high voltage electrical current is passed through the gas, the gas turns into a plasma and the tubes emit light. These gas tubes are a good way to demonstrate Nikola Tesla's reason for inventing the Tesla coil. Tesla wanted to transmit energy through the air to everyone without wires. He often demonstrated this using gas tubes similar to these. The tube will light up whenever a Tesla coil is energized. They do not require contact from the sparks, but will be brightest when the sparks hit them. These tubes are connected to a motor and will spin while the coils are operated. The Tesla coils are powered for very short periods, less than a thousandth of a second. The gas tubes will only be lit up during these short periods. Due to the persistence of vision, you will see spokes of a wagon wheel drawn in the air. The number of spokes will vary as different notes are played. Thus, you will see a musical color wheel that provides a visual display of note frequency. Want to see? So here we have some balloons. <laughs> a balloon is an inflatable, flexible bag filled with a type of gas, such as hel helium, hydrogen, nitrous oxide, air, or in this case, propane. <laughs> Modern balloons can be made from materials such as rubber, latex, or nylon fabric. Early balloons were once made of dried animal bladders. Yuck. Some balloons are purely decorative, while others are used for specific purposes such as, such as meteorology, medical treatment, military defense, transportation, or in this case, fireballs. We are going to use these neon tubes to redirect the power from the Tesla coils at the propane-filled balloons and attempt to explode them. In the name of science.
Uh, in case we should have a bad solder joint in one of the coils, we brought a portable soldering iron to help out. <laughs> this is fire. Ooh, fire. Did you know fire conducts electricity? That's because fire is related to those arcs from the coils, another form of plasma. The flame and hot gases conduct electricity better than the air. So the hot plasma from the coils will be attracted like a moth to a flame. You want to see?
Okay, we're going to start doing the cage of death thingy. Uh, so basically, if you want to go in the cage, uh, kind of line up over to my right, I guess your left, over by that generator. And there's a nice lady over there that uh, will uh, help uh, take care of you anyway. Five bucks for adults, two bucks for kids, and you get the cool, uh, you get the cool ribbon that says you survived the cage of death. So okay, let's get going. <laughs> 